We welcome you to Champ Week presented by Principal. You are watching the SEC on ESPN. Three-time defending SEC tournament champion at South Carolina and the defending national champions getting ready to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Georgia back into the semifinals here in the SEC tournament for the first time in five years. The winner gets who else but Mississippi State. The Bulldogs stay perfect with a come from behind 70 to 55 win against Texas A&M. And we welcome you to Nashville. Pam Moore, along with the Hall of Famer, Gail Gessencourt, Steffi Sorensen, will join us shortly. And yesterday, Asia Wilson came in. She had missed the regular season finale because of vertigo. And she proved yet again that she is the best all-around player in this nation. Well, and what's scary is the three-time SEC Player of the Year has actually taken her game to another level, averaging 27 points and 15 rebounds in her last three games. And she was sensational last night, scored in a variety of ways, and she was a calming factor for her teammates. Asia Wilson came off the bench yesterday, which she will do that again today. She had to leave for a spell, went back to the locker room, and then sprinted back out. She only played 19 minutes, had 24 points, 12 rebounds, four blocks, and unchartable enthusiasm. On the court, this says it all, doesn't it, Gail, how important she is? It does. It was amazing to watch when she's on the court how efficient the entire team is. But when she steps off that court, a little bit shaky. 65-46 was the win against Tennessee, and we will see her come off the bench. But she has to face a pretty stout defense. For more on that, let's go to Steffi Sorensen. Yeah, Pam, South Carolina's post players certainly made their their impact uh, against Tennessee last night, and no doubt about it, but that challenge is welcomed by junior Kalia Robinson, one of the best post defenders and shot blockers in the league, and what a journey she's had to get to where she is today. She's been a player that Joni Taylor at times has had to bench to get her attention, but she's matured, she's been more consistent, and she's doing whatever it takes to please her coaches. She's not out for me. She's out to please Joni Taylor and she wants to be a good teammate. All of that being said, she will be, it is a tall task tonight defending Asia Wilson, but she's up for it. And the Bulldogs were certainly up for it yesterday as they held Missouri to its lowest point total and lowest field goal percentage total of the season. Only 41 points scored by Missouri. Sophie Cunningham shut down as well. We are underway. Georgia wearing the the Reds and South Carolina as the two seed in their home whites. And right away they go inside. And a foul upcoming on Bianca Jackson, the freshman from Montgomery, who was thrust into the starting lineup because of injuries to their guards. Dawn Staley won the national championship last year in her ninth season. No team has ever won four straight SEC tournaments. And they are a couple of wins away from doing that. She want to make sure she saw that foul right. She had jack yeah. glasses. Fuzzy when she saw the Jackson foul. Robinson. Leading the way for Georgia. South Carolina is starting five in a second straight day. Herbert Harrigan will start for Asia Wilson. And Akia was great yesterday. 15 points and three blocks in the quarterfinal win against Tennessee. Gives the ball up to Kleine. And Ty Harris, one of the best point guards in the country, running the show. And Kleine, well, dribbles it off the foot. South Carolina coming in 24 and 6 on the season. They beat Georgia in their only regular season matchup February 15th in Athens. They won by 12. Starting five for Georgia. Steffi already told you about Kalia Robinson. Mackenzie Ingram is their leading scorer, second team all SEC performer. Joni Taylor has done a tremendous job in her third year at Georgia. They've won nine games already, more than, more than last year. And one more win will tie Andy Lander's mark as he had a 10-game improvement as that stands as the biggest turnaround in Georgia history, trying to get him back. Joni is to the NCAA tournament. We'll get him back for the second straight year. And Morrison from way downtown knocks down the three. Yeah, and that's a big three for Q Morrison and for Georgia. Not a high-scoring team. They rely on their defense. So when they can get started, Offensively, it's a big bonus. And Kleine 
and slashed away to a bucket. Georgia only averages about five threes per game, shoot at about a 31% clip, but they are the best field goal percentage defense in the SEC. Robinson, short, but Morrison chased down the tipped rebound. Mackenzie Ingram, a great hustle by the freshman Morrison. But that shows the range of those two post players. Those last two threes, both taken by post players. Claire Robinson, she's just one for 15 from her from the three recently. Those were her last 15. She's only made one, so not the shot you want to see early on. Well, not the traditional post players for this Georgia team. And a nice feed from Taja Cole. Cole has made a really big difference. Billy Clark had to play the point last year. Cole, the transfer from Louisville, has made a big difference. Georgia out to a 6-2 lead. Asia Wilson still has her warm-up top on, in case you're wondering. Kleine. Got closed on very quickly, and then the trap, and they're going to get Ingram for the foul. And really excellent hustle by Georgia. And that's, you know, this time of year, it's those extra hustle plays, the extra possessions that you give to your team the lead to the layups in a tournament game, one, two points, two possessions could be the difference in the game. Herbert Harrigan fires from outside. Alexis Jennings, who played so well yesterday against Tennessee, couldn't get the follow, but two offensive rebounds on this trip. Herbert Harrigan bottled up, and the ball eventually gets to Q Morrison. Jennings, she had her way yesterday against the Missouri Post players. I think it's going to be a little bit different today against Kalai Robinson and company. Here she comes. Jackson going out, so a big lineup. So Herbert Harrigan playing with Jennings and Asia Wilson. And that, those three were absolutely terrific yesterday as they were combined 70% from the floor. So Herbert Harrigan, she moves to the three three position, which gives them great size, but not as much speed and quickness. In fact, only one field goal was made by a guard yesterday for South Carolina. Morrison slashing in, and Asia makes an impact right away, ripping down the rebound. Asia knocking on the door of the career scoring record at South Carolina. And we need to watch Kalai Robinson on defense because she does have a tendency to get in foul trouble, and Georgia can't afford to have her in foul trouble in this game. Herbert Harrigan spins for her first basket. Yeah, and Herbert Harrigan, she's really elevated her game. Last two games averaging 16 points, just seven on the season. Kalani called for the foul. Nice spin move, and again, now she's playing the three, so she's got the size advantage, which allows her to elevate over the defender. Now, Herbert Harrigan got the start in place of Asia Wilson when Asia did not travel to Knoxville for last Sunday's regular season finale. Came up big in that game, and yesterday, 15 points and three blocks also against Tennessee. Tasha Cole started her career at Louisville, where she had six starts a couple of years ago, averaged about three points in 15 minutes. Right sure that last year she was a McDonald's All-American and a Virginia High School Player of the Year. She was out of Richmond, Virginia. Ty Harris, she has struggled in the last couple of games with her shot. No, yeah, she's just two for 13 in the last two games. Solid as a rock, as a distributor. Finally, given space. Wilson rolls to the basket, beat Amy the spot, and got blocked. Big time block by Robinson. That's one of her specialties. She averages three per game. Yeah, and Fly Robinson. Yesterday against Missouri, she had six blocks, and she's starting off right where she left off. Beautiful timing. She's got those long arms and great timing. Fun to watch. Asia Wilson 
leads the SEC with 3.3 blocks. I don't think Asia's had many shots blocked, certainly not that emphatically. She's used to being the blocker. Jennings, Kleine left relatively open, nothing doing, and the rebound grabbed down by Morrison, who has been very active in this first quarter. Clark is not a big time scorer. Cole. And right now, South Carolina is getting beaten with just about every board on this end of the floor. Yeah, they're just being out hustled to the offensive glass. Six offensive rebounds already for Georgia. They turned into six second chance points. It's interesting to watch, you know, when they went against Missouri, who's an excellent three-point shooting team, they were all over all of their players on the blanket. Now today, South Carolina, the perimeter players aren't shooting the ball well, so they're sagging off, helping inside. Major Wilson able to get her first basket. Asia averaging 23 per game this year. Leading score. Got foul. They will take a timeout. South Carolina trails Georgia early in the semifinal. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance. The Volkswagen Tiguan. The not so compact compact SUV and Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfied. Those were scenes from last year's SEC championship game in Greenville, South Carolina. Asia Wilson, an outstanding player holding up the third straight trophy. Asia's never lost an SEC tournament game and South Carolina has tied two Tennessee teams. No one has ever won four straight SEC tournament titles. And a win today will give them a crack at Mississippi State tomorrow. Yeah, and it's been, we've been watching this Georgia offense, and look at Todd Cole. She's looking down, she's got plays written on her wrist. So she's looking up, what am I supposed to call? All right, here we go, ladies. Very impressive. Reminds me of a football quarterback looking at the plays, calling the action. We also see that a lot in softball now. Players wearing wristbands for pitches that are called and other things that really all position players now even wear them. South Carolina, down by two. Trying to get back to the championship game for the fourth straight time. Ty Harris, a little bit too strong, and another good rebound for Mariah Robinson, who got her 1,000th career point in yesterday's quarterfinal win against Missouri. Yeah, now Robinson, we, we talked about watching her. She picked up a silly foul just before that timeout. Now she's got a foul. She's a shot blocker, so she's got to play smart. First turnover for Georgia. They have not scored in almost three minutes. They've missed six straight shots. Asia spins. And it's again. 18 points, 16 rebounds, and three blocks for Asia when these two teams met in the regular season. 16 rebounds. Abby Connolly, number two, a freshman checking in for Georgia. Tonight at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN, part two of college basketball's greatest men's basketball rivalry, and it's a sonic blockbuster. Tar Heels beat Duke in February in Chapel Hill. This one's back at Cameron. It's North Carolina Duke. Streams live on the ESPN app. That comes your way tonight on Saturday. Rob Outside shot off the mark. Good positioning by Kleine, who quickly gets it up to Ty Harris. Leads his team and leads the SEC in assists almost six and a half a game. Wilson. Really, sorry, other than 
Yeah. Over the knee, lob pass into Ingram. Georgia's become a jump shooting team. And on the other end, South Carolina knows where the bread and butter is, and they're going into their post players. And Asia just so smart and poised with the basketball. She takes her time, she makes the move, and she makes it count. And Asia Wilson now with six points, and with that spin move, she has passed Sheila Foster. And Asia Wilson has the most points in the history of South Carolina women's basketball. What a terrific career, completes the three-point play. Player from Hopkins, South Carolina, right outside of Columbia. And she also gives South Carolina its first lead of the game. Ron Staley was telling us she saw Asia first at a camp when Asia was in sixth grade. And Don Staley said that Asia Wilson was awful. She said awful about five times and then terrible yes. about five more times. <laughs> Breaking the drought, Connelly. And Don said she never could have imagined even offering that kid a scholarship, much less the what she's turned into. Yeah, she said she was more excited about getting water for her teammates <laughs> than actually playing the game. And Dawn said she was much better at that <laughs> than playing the game. That was her strong suit. <laughs> and now she's the best in the country. Joni Taylor wired for Sam. Offensively, we got really good movement. We're crashing the glass. Yeah. Just continue making the extra pass. We'll get it. Okay, we'll get it. We've got good movement. Be smart. Be smart on this end of the floor. Let's not start fouling. Come down there and be aggressive, okay? Good job. And it's all about being aggressive with this team. And part of that aggressiveness has got to be going to the basket. Good look for Haley Clark. Good yeah. finish, but Robinson brings up. But that opened it up yeah. as well. Even though she didn't finish that shot, it opened it up for the offensive rebound. Robinson's first points of the night. Wyatt right, just behind Ingram. They both average around 13 points per game. Wilson! Hello. And that's a no-no. You never let her go over her right shoulder. She's good either way, but she's exceptional when you let her use her left hand and go over her right shoulder. So Asia again coming off the bench today, and she's got nine points, four or five from the floor. And a steal. Harris has Jackson to her right, and charged. Asia Wilson, just dominant. You can, one, you can't guard her one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're gonna try and guard her one-on-one, -on -one, you've gotta jump on that right shoulder. Asia Wilson has scored the last nine points for South Carolina. You see what she did in the quarterfinal yesterday. And keep in mind, she did all that in just 19 minutes. Did not start coming back. Uh, didn't practice didn't really go full out until the shoot-around yesterday morning. Dawn Staley didn't start her, was playing her in two-minute spurts. And when she was out there, she was virtually unstoppable. It wasn't even virtual, it was <laughs> yeah, actual. Okay. Just full-out unstoppable. Defense, 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 defense. Now Bates, number 44, right there she is with the ball, checking in, and almost got it home. For South Carolina to take the last shot of the quarter. So Ty Harris is out. Ball in Jackson's hand, the freshman. He's been playing the off guard. Wilson directs traffic rolls. Jackson didn't look to her. Climby. Got it. Perfect way to end the quarter for Carolina. Asia Wilson comes off the bench, scores nine points. And has the most points in the history of this program. And South Carolina up four after one quarter of play in the semis. Asia Wilson coming off the bench for the second straight game. And when she came in, South Carolina was trailing. And then when she got going, all of a sudden, they have the lead. Wilson 
Yeah, she was pretty spectacular. Only played seven minutes, nine points in seven minutes, four or five from the floor, 58%, helping her team to 58% in that first quarter. Let's go with Stephanie Swanson. Well, it's been so remarkable to watch because this is the player who was battling vertigo and didn't do anything last week, absolutely nothing. Thursday for the first hour was her first time of just getting some shots up, getting some movement, and then Friday at shoot around was her first time really getting her heart rate up, and guys, looks like she hasn't missed a beat. Well, it also looks like she's fresh. You know, that's the, that's the good thing that happened was she was actually able to rest. Good position on Robinson, and Robinson able to come in and block her from behind, but Asia stays with them. And I don't think I've ever seen Asia Wilson miss two shots in a row. She might miss the first one, but she's going to get the rebound, and she's going to make the second one count. It's tenacious on the boards. Asia has now scored the last 11 points for South Carolina. But making an impact as soon as you come into a ball game. Six-point lead is the largest of the game so far for South Carolina. Georgia has not beaten Carolina, by the way, since 2013. And it's also the last time that Georgia was in a semifinal in this tournament. Foul out on the perimeter. And Connolly. Lily Grisette, number 24, with the ball in her hands. Freshman from Durham. Jennings off the floor now for Carolina. And Kleine has a couple of threes today. Yeah, and when Kleine starts hitting, that spells trouble for Georgia because they've been sagging off and helping inside. Georgia with the jump shot, missed outside by Haley Clark. And another rebound for Wilson. Inside, they lost. Rizak. Timeout, Georgia. South Carolina coming on strong. They're up 11. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Angry Orchard Hard Cider. Naturally refreshing. A beautiful March night in Nashville, South Carolina up 23 to 12 on a 12 nothing run. Asia Wilson, you can try to stop her, but that doesn't work. Yeah, you look at the double team right here. And it's going to lead to bad things. So you got a double teamer, you got to pick your poison. You do, and it leaves open a wide open Kleine. She's two for three, but that's what Asia Wilson does. You've got a double teamer. She demands a double team. Sometimes she gets triple teamed, and as long as she's got her teammates hitting shots, it's going to be tough to defend. And that is going to be the chore of Vic Schaefer. There's Victoria Vivian. Rashonda Johnson had a great game. Blair Schaefer is Mississippi State on our first semifinal today against Texas A&M. Vic Schaefer and company trying to break the spell of South Carolina's three straight championships. It was the Bulldogs who lost to them in the SEC final the last two years. And South Carolina comes out of that quarter break with a 3-2 zone. Georgia, 4 of 18 from the floor. That's 22%. Asia, flashing in, got fouled. And I just love watching the way South Carolina shares the basketball, and they don't settle for the jumpers. If it's a wide-open jumper off of a double, if it's after a reversal, but early on, they're always going to look inside first. It's that inside-out attack that Dawn Staley has been preaching really ever since we've known her. 
Connolly goes out. Taja Cole, the starting point guard, comes back in for Joni Taylor. And the things that Don Staley has done with that program in Columbia, absolutely remarkable. Three-time SEC Coach of the Year, including last year. Winning the national championship. Highest attendance in the country four straight years. And all four years, the Asia Wilson era. Homegrown girl. It's just been impressive what's been done. Dick Schaefer trying to make some noise. He's already made some magic. Yeah, certainly what he's done in Starkville is also remarkable. Harris has a rim out. Rebound battled for and taken down by Maya Caldwell, one of the freshmen for Jody Taylor, who's done some good recruiting since she came on and building the Georgia program back up. Nice feed from Cole. <laughs> Stephanie Paul gets the bucket. Nice and long cross court. Is that getting some extended minutes? And she'll get some more with moves like that. She's thick at her plan at the wing spot at the three. And this is new for her. She in high school she played in the post. So she's much more comfortable where you just saw her. And what Don Staley did is put her in the post, even though she's playing the wing. And the other two bigs she took outside. And Kurt Staley anticipates that Grisette will be a wing player next year. Angel Wilson gonna graduate. You know, she's like, you know, with all the injuries that they've had to their guards, it's out of necessity. Right. But she's playing in the calendar now. Yeah, Hunter Harrigan. Terrific in the SEC tournament last year and has been good so far in this one. 14 point lead, biggest of the day for South Carolina. Team that lost a couple of guards this season. Bianca Cuevas Moore didn't play at all, and then they lost Lindsey Spann. Graduate transfer from Penn State, who they relied on, and it was their best three-point shooter. Yeah, she was making two and a half threes a game, which really opened things up on the inside for Asia Wilson. Gazette somehow was able to save the ball from going out of bounds, missed the shot, but then committed the foul. Let's go to Joni Taylor's last cut. But guys, we can't give them easy things. Kwame hitting threes, hey, okay? We gotta pick our poison, but we can't give up layups. There's no such thing and it wasn't my man. If we're not talking, it's everybody that's on the floor. It's everybody's fault. Let's go, lead the team, let's go. Excellent job by Joni Taylor. She's absolutely right. You know, you can't just have your man. It's team defense and it's team defense for a reason. You gotta help one another out. And she'll live with Kalani shooting threes. Another turnover for Georgia. Fifth of the game. Asia can shoot from there. Rebound taken down by Robinson. Got it quickly up to Cole. And Engel did a good job of backing Wilson down. To give a good look at the bucket. Jennings just getting the ball back into the game. She has not scored today after getting 19 points yesterday against Tennessee and 12 rebounds. She gets doubled and got hit. Morrison's foul. Now the Jackson going to come in for Grisette. Pliny thought maybe for her it was Grisette, but Don got and Don gave her a nice high five. So good job, freshman. You know, she's played more under control in this game. She's a tremendous athlete and has a great upside. Sometimes gets out of control yet, still learning that wing spot. And that's one thing this pass goes over Jennings said that Don Staley said is that she right now has decided to get out of Cruzette's way and kind of let her make some mistakes, you know, learn while you're out there and, and just let her figure things out on her own. No 
missing out on Robinson. And I like the Robinson shot fake. Take it to the basket. She's just got to finish, but you got to have that attack mindset. That was the sixth rebound for Asia Wilson to go along with her 12 points. North Carolina shooting 57% so far. Georgia just 25%. And the game changed when Asia came in off the bench. the three, but instead decided to drive in, still couldn't get it to go. Now Ty Harris aggressively to the basket. And that's a, that's a basket she needed desperately. She's just been struggling. Now she was two for 15 in her last two games, so that's a big bucket for her. That started off 0 for 2 today, missed every shot yesterday from the floor. She is such a key for the South Carolina team. They need her playing with confidence. She always does a great job taking care of the ball and distributing, but you need her to feel confident going to the basket as well. South Carolina takes a timeout of 14. ESPN and the ESPN app. And that is coming your way a week from Monday. These two teams definitely will be in the NCAA tournament. South Carolina defending their title. Seventh turnover gives the ball back to Georgia. And we will see Itty Bitty Morgan Morgan, the hero in the upset of UConn tomorrow in the championship game. It will be the third straight time that they will play South Carolina in the final. Eric Bruton has the travel call. He's joined today by Dee Cantor and Michael McConnell. Mississippi State still watching. Will Johnson, one of the heroes today. Very balanced attack against Texas A&M. Cole is, talk about sticky defense, Cole is all over Harris. Yeah, I called her the glove yesterday because she was so tight and aggressive on the ball throughout the game. And Harris just kept at it and got a good looking shot off. Couple of buckets here in the second quarter for Harris. Yeah, and sometimes it just takes one to get you going and get that confidence back. And Georgia, meanwhile, their shots are, they're going south in a hurry. They have only hit on 23% of them. And they're being outscored 14 to four in this quarter. Wilson lost the dribble. Now a chance for Robinson. Harris back to defend. Got a hand in there. Oh boy, Georgia with a couple of good chances. Caldwell, there you go. Much needed by Caldwell. Now Caldwell, freshman from Charlotte, her first bucket of the day. Double gets it over to Harris. That's twice now that Asia's lost on the dribble. Last couple of possessions, and there's Georgia basketball. Morrison with the assist on the pull layup. Yeah, and Georgia's doing a nice job with their guards coming in. Anytime Asia's getting ready to put the ball on the deck, and she will, coming away with the steal. Oh, the big pull with a Silly foul out there, halftime. Coming up on the Audi Halftime Report. Peter Burns here now with Dale Fortner and Amanda Butler. They're going to take a look at all that's going on in this championship Sunday Eve. 
Notre Dame got 27 points from Marina Mabry, a new career high as they came from behind to beat Florida State to go to the SEC, the ACC championship game. Kalani's got 3-3, three three, so they're going to get you up to speed on everything that's going on. Kalani getting that three right before the end of the half, and it was a good half for South Carolina. They will take a 14-point lead into the locker room. Asia Wilson with 12, Pliny with 11 to lead the way for South Carolina. No one in double figures for Georgia, who only shot 26% in the first half. Steffi Sorensen standing by with Don Staley. Well, Don, your team was able to really get the ball inside and kick it out and knock down some threes. What did you make of your team's offensive execution? Um, I, I liked our ball movement. Uh, the ball didn't, you know, no one held the ball for more than two seconds. And when you have that kind of ball movement, it puts pressure on, you, on the defense. And I thought we, we, get, we shot balls and rhythms and, and went in. Georgia, a physical, tough team. They defend. What concerns you the most about them in that third quarter moving forward? Well, for us, we got to take care of the ball. If we can get shots at the basket, we're rebounding the ball pretty well. We got to give them one shot. So it's going to be a rebounding game, a possession game. So hopefully we can we can do our jobs boxing out and, and keep pushing tempo. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Peter Burns, welcome to Nashville. You are watching. The SEC on ESPN, Mississippi State with an impressive 70-55 win over Texas A&M and they are awaiting the winner of this game as we could have for the third time in a row, Mississippi State, South Carolina final. Pam Ward along with the Hall of Famer, Gail Gaston Coors and South Carolina with Asia Wilson coming off the bench, looks great again in the first half. Yeah, we've been talking about how efficient Asia is, but today it's been the entire team shooting over 62% in that first half. Asia Wilson is starting the second half on the bench as well. Maya Robinson gets her second shot to fall, and, and you talked about the 63% shot by South Carolina in the first half, and you counter that with just 26% for Georgia, who really relied heavily on second chance points. Yeah, half of their points came from the offensive glass, so great job getting on the glass, but you've gotta be able to hit your first shots and score from the outside as well. Clyde Robinson, that's a great sign. They need her to score to be successful. She averages 13 points. She only had two in the first half. An outside shot by Haley Clark. Who's not a big time scorer for this team, one of three scholar athletes of the year in the SEC, graduated in three years with a degree in finance. Or finance, however you want to say it. She's smart. Herbert Harrigan getting the start for Wilson, who's working her way back in the lineup after about a vertigo last week. Texas Jennings did not score in the first half after having a terrific quarterfinal yesterday against Tennessee. You're heading Kaliah Robinson, Robinson on you defensively. That'll change things for you. A little bit different than what she was facing yesterday. And Georgia coming out of the blocks on fire. Ingram with the bucket. And you notice it's the seniors. Ingram, Clark, those are kids. This is their last chance to win SEC Tournament Championship. And they start this quarter with a 6-0 run. But this is what we saw at the beginning of the game as they got out to a fast start, and then Asia Wilson came in and things changed. And things have changed for Ty Harris and the rest of this backcourt. The guards yesterday hit just one shot out of 19 tries against Tennessee. They're now seven of 10 today. Yeah, and Ty Harris, I know she's breathing a sigh of relief. She made those two layups. She needed them hard drives to the basket. And that's given her that confidence to shoot the three. Harris always so great distributing the basketball. It makes him just that much better when she can score. Jackson able to tip the ball to herself eventually. Bianca Jackson. Finey found a little bit of a lane wide open, but could not finish. She had three threes in the first half. It's a career high for her in one game. Let's go over to Steffi, Coach Taylor. Coach, what was your message to your team there at the half? 
We've got to continue to just execute on the offensive end. We're stagnant. We're not moving. And then be who we are on defense. We're thinking too much, and we're missing assignments. And that's not us. Just be Georgia basketball defensively. Thank you, Joni. Thank you. That was just a few moments uh, before the third quarter started. And defense, really, they call it a layered defense. They talk about defense travels. That has been an emphasis since Coach Taylor took over three years ago. Yeah, and it was the defensive end of the floor that really got them the win yesterday against Missouri. So they've got to rely on their defense, and, and she always says the offense will come. You've just got to trust your defense. Jennings bottled up yet again. Robinson all over it. And finally Jennings gives out the, the, the yell because she gets her first basket. She has had to work hard for every inch on the floor. Ingram backs up Herbert Harrigan, missed everything. And here comes Ty Harris, it's a three on two. But how fast is Q Morrison? She just came out of nowhere to knock it away. Yeah, Ty Harris is not used to having another guard come up from behind her and get a steal. Four misses, rebound battle four, and here it goes to South Carolina. And Alexis Jennings, you're right. She has had to work so hard down low, and you see how she's got to stretch out because she knows that shot blocker is trying to, trying to go after her. Asia Wilson. She's such a great teammate. When you see her on the bench or you see her on the court, I prefer to see her on the court, yeah, but we, we she is so engaged with her teammates. She just checked in for Jennings, and that reaction was a reaction to Jennings' reaction, which was quite funny. She was all pumped up after getting her first basket tonight. Over Harrigan created a little space against Ingram. She is really good in March. She had a good March last year and doing the same this year as a sophomore. And it really take South Carolina to another level with the way that Herbert Harrigan is playing. To have that third option in the post, and she also comes out and she plays some at the wing. She's got the size to play on the wing where she can post up, and she's got a nice shot for a post player. Wilson. Unable to get a finger on that shot by Morrison. Freshman being very aggressive today. And we're just seeing a much greater sense of urgency on the offensive end from Georgia in this half. Wilson driving on Robinson, and that's the third time she's lost a dribble and turned it over in this game. Hugh Morrison, how about that? She had a great game against Missouri yesterday. 16 points, four assists, and no turnovers. And Q is showing up again today. That's giving him a great lift. Just seven rebounds to go with her six points. Asia, and into Ingram. But the Harrigan gives him a second chance, and Ingram Got her on the hand. South Carolina up by 11 in Nashville. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by eSurance. Auto and home insurance for the modern world. And Carl's Jr. and Hardy. We packed our signature big burger flavor you love into our new charbroiled sliders. It is a perfect day to sit on your couch all day and watch all the championships. ACC is going to be Louisville and Notre Dame. And the Big Ten, we have a Minnesota lost to Ohio State 90 to 88. So Ohio State's in the Big Ten final. And Tennessee by far the most tournament title. South Carolina three, and they're three in a row, coinciding with the freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons of that young lady. Not coincidental. Not coincidental. <laughs> Coinciding, but not coincidental. <laughs> Asia Wilson. The winner of this game will play Mississippi State tomorrow. Mississippi State fell behind early to Texas A&M. They came away with the victory. David Harrigan, 2-2 two at two the line. After Mackenzie Ingram committed her third foul right before our last time out. Yeah, and that's, that's a primary concern. Mackenzie Ingram, she is the heart and soul of this team. She's the leader. 
And she's a calming factor for this team as well. Now Robinson hits, and when they came out of the timeout, Ingram is not out there. And Taylor doesn't want to risk it, and Herbert Harrigan. Both teams Good. running exceptional plays to come out of this timeout and get the ball inside to their post players. All right, shot John and Taylor went down to the bench and was talking to Ingram. He was sitting towards the end of the bench. Second team SEC performer this year, senior. Same play, Georgia did a much better job this time of defending it. That was a chancy pass. Asia Wilson's working hard down low. Pliny left it short, the shot clock about to die. Georgia coming out with a little pep in their step in the third quarter after they only scored in single digits in the second quarter, just nine points. And they're scoring now, which is allowing them to get into their 2-2-1 press. They're a team that loves to run. They need to get those easy buckets. Harrigan continues to be on a roll. 12 points, 5 of 7 from the floor. North Carolina led by 14 at the half. Guarded by Harris, shot clock in single digits, and a foul on the jumper by Robinson. Let's go to Georgia's last huddle and Joni Taylor. Hey guys, everything is good, right energy, right pace, good job, stay with it, don't look at the clock, we're winning this quarter. We were down 14, it's not gonna happen overnight, we gotta continue to get stops. And then on this end, take care of business. We continue to do what we're doing. The pace, all of it looks really, really good. And I love that. You know, you just have to focus. It's one possession at the time. Sometimes kids look up at the clock and they're like, oh my God, we're 14 down. And then they start to rush. And it's if you'll just focus on getting one stop at a time, one great offensive set at a time, all of a sudden you look up and you got yourself a ball game. So two misses at the line by Robinson, who is only hit, hitting at a 61% clip for the season. Jennings checking in for Herbert Harrigan. Now posting up hard, holy smokes, against Paul. There's some physicality in the post there, Dale. Well, yeah, and I love, you know, when we've had the opportunity to watch South Carolina's practices, they work on these post-ups all the time. And I mean, it is an emphasis. You post, they talk about reposting. If you get it in, you look to skip the ball. If it's not there, kick it back out if you can't score. I mean, it, this is drilled into them every single day. First foul on Paul, and she goes out in favor of Bianca Blanaru who did not play yesterday at all against Missouri. Richard Jr. from Romania. Number 51 in red. Finey waiting for the pass that was supposed to go through the lane and then a foul out on the perimeter by Morrison. Her second. Wilson sips it all the way across court, and then South Carolina lost it, trying to get it into Jennings. Cole, good job to chase it down. Finally, fires away, and Wilson who was being bothered by Morrison from behind, came up with the rebound. Ty Harris gives it up to Kleine for the easy two. And that's why you love Ty Harris. She just makes such great decisions in the open court. And does it when she's going at high speed, too. She never changes expressions. You never know if she's thrilled about something or if she's <laughs> upset. She's just Ty. 
Dawn Staley has talked about the fact that her basketball IQ, she said, I knew she was a great point guard. I knew she could score. She said, I didn't understand when we recruited her how high her basketball IQ was. She won three state titles in high school in Indiana and was looking mostly at Big Ten schools before South Carolina came calling. Yeah, Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson would not be denied. This is one of the best defensive players in the league. And not only do you love the way she's determined to score, the passion, she ignites that in her teammates and in the fans. Just another day at the office for Asia Wilson, another double-double for 51st of her brilliant career and 21st of this season. When your best player gives you that, the boost, the camaraderie, the excitement, that's, that's everything in one person. And that doesn't happen. You know, it's very, very rare, and Dawn Staley's done a tremendous job because she knows this is a once-in-a-lifetime player. That was a nice move inside by Gabby Connolly. And then you add on the fact that she's from right outside of Columbia, it's just perfect. Second violation on Wilson. And Asia Wilson committed to South Carolina, was talking about winning championships. A lot of people snickered, didn't think that was possible, and look what happened in her third year. Yeah, and she they told the story about when she got to South Carolina, she thought about number 23, but she said, I'm certainly not good enough to wear number 23, so I'll take 22. Anybody will ever wear that again in South Carolina history after what she's done. Ingram can't get it to go. And South Carolina, now 10 minutes away from a rematch with Mississippi State in tomorrow's final. They lead at 53 37. Now that's ballet, Gail. And that's basketball ballet right there. Gamecocks in control. in early March in Nashville, Tennessee. And the American Women's Championship, not in Nashville, will be in Uncasville, Connecticut, so unlike Nashville. And a UConn, the top seed, never have lost a game, either regular season or in the tournament. They take on Lisa Stockton and Tulane. And will Asia Wilson get another shot at UConn? Not so good in the regular season, but she's been really good in this game. She has. And once again, you see her, almost every shot we saw, she's going over that right shoulder. So I think Georgia did a better job in the second half of kind of bottling her up. But she's still, when she's got that will to go to the over her right shoulder with her left hand, she's almost unstoppable. For the second straight game, Asia came off the bench, and the plus minus continues to be impressive. Big difference against Tennessee, and a slightly bigger difference tonight. Plus 21. Fifteen points, ten rebounds. South Carolina trying to get back to the championship game and become the first team to ever win this tournament four years in a row. Just like Notre Dame is trying to do that in the ACC tomorrow. Foul inside, and if they do that, they will break the the deadlock they're in now with three straight regular season and tournament titles in the ACC with Duke University. Back when you were their coach. That's yeah, that's going to be quite a matchup, I think. I'm looking forward to that matchup. Notre Dame Louisville Morrison just picked up with 3,000. You might recall when they played in the regular season, everybody was all excited about it. And Louisville just cleaned Notre Dame's clock, which was very unusual for Notre Dame to give up as many points. And it should be very. Very fun tomorrow yeah, We Greensboro. talked to Muffet about that because we had them after that game, and she said it's the one game all year that we just did not compete. So I'm sure they're looking forward to having another opportunity. Time issue, so they're going to put some 
more time on the clock, adjust the clock. Let's go to Steffi Sorensen. Well, guys, I had a great conversation at the half with Asia Wilson's dad, Roscoe Wilson Jr., and he told me, listen, Asia didn't even want to play basketball, okay? She loved volleyball and soccer. She wasn't a fan of AAU basketball, that whole scene. She didn't want to be a part of it, but as she kept growing and growing around 12 to 13 years old, it was starting to become pretty clear that she was going to be a tall player. People were begging her to play, so, but her dad reiter reiterated that Asia was so awful. <laughs> she was a great cheerleader and all that until dad reminded her of how expensive AAU costs. He said, Asia, if we're going to do this, I need you to buy in. They spent hours before and after practice as her dad coached along her side. But she would come to South Carolina camp and just shoot threes. Roscoe said Don didn't want a point forward. She wanted a power forward. So back to work they went in endless hours of extra training. She had over 500 offers coming into South Carolina. She told her dad she wanted a gold medal and a national championship, both of which she has. Well, that's so impressive. And it's funny talking to Dawn today as well. She said, you know, when Asia was in sixth grade, when she first got the job, she said, Roscoe came to her and said, hey, I, I got this daughter now. She can play. And she said, like, I haven't heard that before. <laughs> she said, but it turned out eventually to be true. But lots of work put in by Asia and her father and those around her to make all of her dreams a reality. And she was a terrific volleyball player. That's funny, isn't it? She didn't really like basketball. And well, now look at it. She's not awful anymore. <laughs> She's awfully good. Foul inside. Ingram. That is four on McKenzie. And earlier in this game, she passed Sheila Foster for most points in South Carolina history and continues to pad back. Moving in a, just an indelible mark on that program. And not just as a player. I mean, the, the statistics are crazy, but what she's been able to do and kind of really get that town in that area, just the whole state electrified for South Carolina women's basketball. Draws another foul. And that's where you saw they forced Asia to go right. Now, when she went right, she was taking an off-balance shot, but they bailed her out with a foul. So you can see right here, shading her left shoulder. Now, she's going right. You've done a good job. Make her finish. She was going to go up with her left hand still, so just make her job a little bit more difficult. Roscoe's little girl, two for two from the line. Just about every mock draft you see for the WNBA, she is projected to be the first pick by the Las Vegas Aces, who used to be the San Antonio Stars. Uh, he played a first pick for a, for a brand new franchise, an effective brand new franchise. Not a bad face of the program. Asia's Aces. And that's it. You need to copy that. Guy. Jackson called for her second foul. As Cole heads to the free throw line. Georgia this season giving up an average of 56.7 points per game. South Carolina going to go over that. The best defensive teams in the SEC. Not able to score enough today. Taja Cole is someone who has turned herself into a pretty good free throw shooter after starting off really Miserable at the line. Yeah, she gets in the gym and shoots 200 free throws after Whoa. practice every day. And it's paid off. Wilson. <laughs> Was that with a freshman -y, freshman like mistake? The foul far away from the bucket. Bates, about halfway down. 
Harris pulls it back up. Wilson posting hard. Double. Rebound fought for. And a fresh shot clock. Jennings almost chucked up a three there. She's one for six from three this year. Well, that's when post players love it when the shot clock goes down because then they get, they get to shoot without <laughs> That's when you get your stuff without getting yelled at. <laughs> Here's fouls now on Robinson. There's a, a war going on down low. This time, able to get a nice clear jump shot in. So she's passed 20 points for the 18th time this year and 44th time in her career. Is that able to grab the rebound? And this 19 point advantage is the biggest of the night for South Carolina. They led by four after the first quarter. And have just built on it ever since. Jennings gets fouled. Almost able to put it in with her left hand. Second foul on Bates. And over the limit. And South Carolina shooting three throws for the rest of the game. Yeah, watch down low. I mean, yeah, they're pushing off, and Georgia is a physical team. Asia accepts the challenge, says okay. Jennings delivers at the line, and Asia Wilson has been taken out of the game. We'll see how long that lasts. She was taken out yesterday against Tennessee with what was a comfortable lead, and then Tennessee started making a run, and. Coach Staley did not hesitate. She got her calming force back in there. Yeah, she definitely needed to go back in the game. Especially Tennessee was pressing at that point in time. So she had five subs in the game and, and it was not pretty. It got ugly quickly and put her star back in and she just really gives everybody such a sense of confidence. Conway broke an almost three minute scoring drought for Georgia with her bucket. I'm kind of surprised that Sorry. Georgia's not pressing. Mm -hmm. They scored down here. Once you score, you've got to, you've got to make up some ground, and you've got to do it quickly. They've got the players to press. Get that into the press and, and try and create some turnovers. And they can do that with this defense. Right? You're absolutely right. You can wreak havoc with it. Good rebound by Bates. And another foul. Bates, a freshman from Roanoke, Virginia. Over Harrigan has picked up the foul, her second. Let's see if Georgia, they'll probably, they'll go into their press off of this made free throw. But you gotta make your free throws. We had, we ended up, put, I put in a press off of missed free throws because when you're desperate mm. at the end of games, sometimes you have to score to get in your press, but we would press off of missed free throws. Otherwise, if you're not scoring, you can't you can't get into your press. Bates throws 0 for 2 from the line. So that's an example. Now Georgia can't press, mm -hmm. and you've got to you've got to press right now. So you've got to learn to press off makes and misses. No wonder you're in the Hall of Fame. That's good thinking, there, Bill. It was out of desperation. <laughs> desperation can come in inspiration. Really <laughs> Absolutely. Bates called for another foul. Asia Wilson chilling on the bench. Good to keep her fresh. You're going to need her tomorrow against Mississippi State. Yeah, and it's been interesting talking with Dawn Staley today. We asked her about kind of flying under the radar a little bit. I said, you know, everybody's been talking about Mississippi State, and rightfully so, because they're undefeated. And she said, she said, yeah, I've really enjoyed it with this team. We've been under the radar. That's exactly where we want to be. We want to be the underdog. 
sitting next to Jolette Law. He's a South Carolina native, coming over after several years at Tennessee. Yeah, she did say on paper, everybody thinks we're an easy win. I don't I think it's quite that extreme. She said they think we're an easy win until they play us. Yes. <laughs> and you think the defending national yeah. champion with the player of the year candidate, it's, it's really nice to have that behind you and, and yet be an underdog. <laughs> Timeout on the floor. Dawn Staley's team about to make it official and get to another final. These two teams met just once in the regular season. It was in Starkville on February 5th. Victoria Vivian scored 20 of her 24 points in the first half. Connie had a big three at the end of the third quarter. South Carolina led by five entering the fourth, but then stuff happened. Mississippi State outscored South Carolina 28 to nine in the fourth. They went at 67 to 53 on their way to their first regular season championship in the SEC. You see South Carolina had won 10 of the last 11 meetings, including the big one last April in the championship game. And Mississippi State won the last one. And if they win the next one, they will have the double and you know Vic's not leaving until this game is over. No. SEC <laughs> Coach of the Year is still there with his staff. Harley Tebow is there. Dominique Dillingham back there. You know, he's always going to coach him up. So, you know, they, they know South Carolina. There's Carly, the dad, Mike Tebow, the head coach of the Washington Mystics. Brother Eric, an assistant on that staff. One of the better coaches in the league. Staying in the family business. And we always talk to coaches, and when their children go in, they're, they, they're baffled as to why they work. <laughs> it like their parents it's not work an easy profession. <laughs> Very stressful. Ingram. Harris tries to beat her to the spot. Wise not to foul her. McKenzie with the finish. And Georgia still does not have one player in double figures. Now they do. Ingram just did it. So you're looking at very cheap. <laughs> there you go. She has 10, Robinson has eight, so does Cole and Morrison. But this is a Georgia team. When you look, their two leading scorers are Engram and uh, Robinson, and they only average 13. It's not like they have big time scorers anyway. No, it's a it's a very balanced effort, but they just need a little more scoring from just about everybody right now. Kenzie comes from a very athletic family. Evan was a star at Ole Miss, and now with, in the, with the Giants in the National Football League, where he is a tight end. Drafted last year by the Giants. Another foul. Sports Center tonight comes your way after the Timberwolves and the Jazz play on ESPN with Stan Barrett. And then we'll have a look at the Rockets' 15-game winning streak. North Carolina Duke recap coming your way 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Stan and Neil are very entertaining guys. They have that, they're out in L.A. and they kind of have that cool California vibe going, you know, with the stuff you don't have. They're cool, cool and edgy. <laughs> yes, they are cool and edgy, which has been established. You self-profess or not, <laughs> not, those guys are. I love watching those guys. Alexis Jennings gets a nice hand from the South Carolina fans. So here we go, Gail, South Carolina. Mississippi State tomorrow, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a lot of fun. Very intense, very focused, very two very determined and proud teams. And coming into this season, it, it, they were the two best teams, so it's only fitting that they would be playing for the championship tomorrow. You know, Georgia also had a 12 and four record with South Carolina finishing in a tie for second, but these are the two best teams and they look forward to the third straight year that they will play in the championship game. South Carolina, is that's a over and back. Mississippi State has won 32 in a row. Only Tennessee from 96 to 98 when they were 
Back now, what, three straight national championships has won more in a row as an SEC team. And Mississippi State looks to grow on that. The Joe Champion teams back in the Auburn heyday when they were getting their Final Four regularly in the late 80s. Also up there. But what a year. And you're right, to run the table in this during conference? the regular season in this conference is crazy. And people forget, I mean, he lost several starters as well. It's not like he returned all five starters. Plugging in McCowan. Johnson, a little bit more offensive oriented this year. Last team to run the table was Tennessee in 98 when they won the national championship, the Holt Squaw era. We'll see Georgia next in the NCAA tournament, and we'll all find out where everybody's going a week from Monday night on Selection Monday. So perhaps one area of concern, though, for South Carolina in these two SEC tournament games, Tennessee yesterday, Georgia today, they turned the ball over 43 times. And yes, John, we'll talk about that. Yes, and you know Mississippi State, they're going to bring the heat. That's what they do. Four fouls on Herbert Harrigan. Well, take some glasses off again. It's usually on fouls, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> she might be not, they might not be seeing the fouls the same way the officials do. Or she's wishing she wasn't yes. seeing what she yeah, was. She's averting her eyes. Maya Caldwell with the free throw line. A lot of youth on this Georgia team. Ingram and Clark, they will lose. But Still break, break those ahead for this program. Yeah, and I mean, what Joni Taylor has done this year, picked to finish eighth, tied for second, really remarkable. This team, and, and she's talked about it, this team has bought in to the fact that they're going to be a great defensive team, they're going to share the ball, and have great chemistry. This will be their sixth loss of the season, and all six of them coming to top 25 teams, so no bad losses on the resume. See where where they end up. All well, another foul. Jackson at the line. So 4.30 Eastern time tomorrow on ESPN2. On Championship Sunday, that's when we will have the SEC Championship game, South Carolina and Mississippi State. Can South Carolina be the first SEC team to win four straight tournament titles, or will Mississippi State win their first? Yeah, it's gonna be, I just can't wait for this game because these teams are gonna get after one another. Excellent coaches, great pride, great tradition. I can't believe Vic is leaving with a minute 34 left in the game. He's probably rushing back now so he can catch the last minute. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's going to watch it. Might be on the ESPN app, but he's going to watch it. So bench players getting some time. Asia Wilson has been sitting since the 6.28 mark of the fourth quarter, so she's getting some more rest over there. Asia finishing today with 21 points and 11 rebounds off the bench. Herbert Harrigan with 12 points and five boards in a start. And after the whistle, I looked over and Asia kind of buried her head in her hands. And just for this one to, to end and they can Look forward to the, the big championship game tomorrow. <laughs> Call ball back to the free throw line for Georgia. One shot, everybody, one. 
And that's the area, you know, George is going to have to improve upon is they've got to be able to score. They got some good looks down in low, and there's another miss. They've got to hit those shots. Hitting just 30% from the floor this afternoon compared to 56% for South Carolina. Gamecox going to win their 25th game of the year. Herbert Harrigan, double H. That's the skill that she's been displaying lately. We saw it last year towards the end of the year. And again, she's battled through some injuries, but now she's playing her best basketball, which is what Coach Staley wants. South Carolina faithful cheering it on. There's going to be a lot of maroon in this building tomorrow as we get South Carolina and Mississippi State for the third straight season. Battling it out for the SEC tournament title. 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2. A hug between Joni Taylor and Don Staley, your buddies. Fourth straight year, South Carolina's going to the SEC tournament championship. They beat Tennessee and Asia's freshman year, Mississippi State, the last two years. When we come back, Asia Wilson will be talking to Steffi Swords. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Investments, retirement, insurance. Craft, family greatly. And Dr. Scholl's Custom Fit Orthotics. For the fourth straight year, Asia Wilson and South Carolina heading to the SEC Tournament Final. 21 points, 11 boards for Wilson. And she is standing by with Steffi Sorensen. Bye, Don. <laughs> Well, Asia, Asia, given the fact that you suffered the vertigo illness coming into this tournament, though, how did you maintain such a sharp, sharp focus? Um, I give it all to my medical staff. They really helped me out a lot. They have, I had just enough time to kind of get in the gym, get some shots of it at the same time. I had to worry about my health, of course. So they really got me back going, got me back feeling normal. So I give all the credit to them. They really helped me out a lot. When you guys will take on Mississippi State next, think about that last matchup when you faced them earlier yeah. this season and now uh, tomorrow. Uh, I mean, they're playing great basketball right now. They are a hard team to beat, of course. <laughs> so, I mean, we're just going to go out with the same mindset we've had this whole season. It's just doing us, sticking within our system. And we're just going to go out here and play us and do us. Best dancer on the team? Um, mm, me. No question. Without a doubt. <laughs> Thank you, Asia. <laughs> I think she might be the best everything on the team. Asia Wilson, brilliant again, coming off the bench. And they will play Mississippi State. The top two seeds going head to head. 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2, 3.30 Nashville time. We will see you then. As both Mississippi State and South Carolina had impressive semifinal wins. For Gail Gessencourt and Steffi Sorensen, I'm Pam Ward as we say so long from Nashville. See you tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern on ESPN2 for the title game. Coming up, SEC Indoor Track and Field.